Uh, oh, hold on. It's asking me the account owner can also watch this. Okay, got it. All right. So, sorry, technical difficulties. Um, so, pretty much the intention with these town hall meetings is to get a rep from each department so that we can disseminate information um, and keep everybody informed. Uh, pass the mic back to Tremel since that's what he does best. <laughs> I, for those who don't know me, my name is Tremel Thompson. I am a shop steward for Local 100. I am also the founder of Progressive Action. And one of the reasons why I decided to create this Local 100 town hall Zoom meeting is for us to have a place where your concerns can be heard and they could be addressed properly. So I want you guys to utilize um, Michael and myself on getting your voices heard in your respective department. So like Mike said, we are looking for representatives in every department. Um, we are looking for representatives in more than one department. So just because I represent RTO or Mike represent Map Store or TA Surface, um, we still looking for people to get involved in every department. You can never not get enough people to get involved. And we wanted to create a central location where you can get information regarding various topics and you can get your, your answers, um, your questions answered regarding whatever concerns you may have to the best of our, our ability or if someone in the crowd and the audience can answer the question, it will also be great. So um, we do have agenda items for today. Um, I'm going to discuss the importance of um, uh, going to union meetings. You know, a lot of people misconstrue what union meetings are actually for, um, the purpose of union meetings and the power that members actually have going to union meetings. Time and time again, I hear people say, oh, I went to a meeting, it was a waste of time, we didn't get any information. And I'm going to explain what a union meeting is basically for. And Mike, you could tell them um, the topics that you're going to cover. I'm pretty much gonna cover two basic topics that I feel everybody should know about. Uh, first is gonna be the public service loan forgiveness. That's if you have a federally, federal uh, student loan. And being that you work for a government agency, we actually qualify for this. So the second topic would be the line of duty of unlimited sick leave if you participated in 9-11 and um, how you can go about getting that. And we will also be answering questions regarding the upcoming contract, um, how we should be organizing and mobilizing for that. And whatever issues or questions you may have at the end of um, this Zoom. So Mike, you wanna set it off or you want me to set it off? No, you go ahead. All right, so let me, uh, let me share my screen real quick. Um, Okay, so like I said, the first thing that I'm going to be covering, and you guys should be able to see it on your screen now. Let me scroll up. Um, you know, basic tips for running a union meeting and the importance of, of union meetings. Now, I'm not going to read all of this to you guys. I can send you guys the link afterwards, but I like to read things and, and then disseminate it in, in the simplest, like the simplest way possible. Like I like to give information, no disrespect, like I'm talking to a four year old because that's the, the simplest version that I can give you for you to understand and for you to grasp it. So um, a union meeting, like I said, time and time again, people go to union meetings and one of the, the most uh, popular complaints that I hear was or is, I didn't get nothing out of the meeting. It was a waste of time. And the question that I asked members are, what were you looking to get out of the union meeting? And do you even know the purpose of a union meeting? So um, you go to a union meeting and let's just say you're going there. What, what are you going there for? Are you expecting to learn something? Are you expecting to get your issue addressed? And a lot of people think that they go to union meetings to actually be taught or lectured on um, policy, work rules, and things of that nature. That's not really the purpose of a union meeting. The purpose of a union meeting 
is to address issues in your respective department, not to actually um, have the reps there teach you anything because everybody have a responsibility of knowing what their job is. And in our union in particular, and in my department in particular, you have reps who don't know the answers to a lot of questions, which, which is prob problematic within itself. So you'll go there asking a question and the reps is not educated enough or don't have the experience to answer the question. And when your questions don't get answered, you get frustrated and you talk bad and say, I didn't get nothing from this union meeting and, and things of that nature. But one important aspect of going to a union meeting is raising motions. And um, a lot of people don't know what raising a motion is. Raising a motion is basically um, presenting something for your department. It could be something such as uh, knowing when your reps go on vacation. It could be something as simple as that, or it could be something as complicated as um, we want electronic voting for our next election. Now, uh, let's use the latter. Let's use you want to know when your reps is on vacation. Now I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm going to be very transparent during this um, meeting right here. Something happened for real about, I think like two to three weeks ago, somebody who I know, um, somebody I know called me from RTO and said, um, and said uh, they was upset because a rep was not answering their, their um, hold on, let me admit all. A rep was not answering their questions um, or returning a phone call and they felt violated, they felt disrespected. And I didn't understand what was going on. And they was like, yo, I'm gonna go to, uh, to Broadway and, 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 and punch the person in the face. And I, and I know that person outside of transit. And I'm like, no, you, you can't do that. You'll lose your job. And they was like, you know, I don't even care if I lose my job at this point. You know, I can't take the disrespect or whatever the case was. So I made a couple of phone calls about that rep and I come to find out that rep was on vacation. And I was like, wow, so you, you was going to go down there and possibly see that rep when they came back, um, get physical with them because they was on vacation and you didn't know because you need help. So back to going back to the union meetings, let's say, I believe that we should know when our reps is, are on vacation. We should know um, what reps are available to us at all times, no matter when. Uh, uh, they know when we are on vacation and, you know, I believe reps should have the same, should be subject to the same rules, most of the rules that we have. So I think that they vacation should be laid out the same way. I don't think that a rep should get um, extra privilege because they are a union rep. They are representing us. They are working for us. I don't believe that they should have um, different privileges than us when it comes to the work rule. So Let's say, you know what? We, we wanna know when our reps are on vacation. You would go to a union meeting. Now they have something called old business and new business. The old business will discuss uh, the prior happenings of, the, meet, of the, um, the, the last month union meeting and the new business will bring up the new issues of what, whatever issues you may have. Now, during that time, um, the chairs, the chairs run the meetings. So your, your division chairs are the people who are in control of the meetings, not the vice presidents. The vice presidents are not in control of the meeting. The, the division chair is in control of the meeting. And then after the division chair, if the division chair is not there, it's the vice chair and um, so on and so forth. The vice president is not in charge of the meeting. Um, so let's say, you know what? I want to bring up a motion of... We want, to, we want to know an RTO when our reps are on vacation. You will raise the motion. They will ask, will somebody second the motion? Somebody will second the motion if they support what your motion is. And then after that, they will take a vote on that motion. And it will be however yays to nay. So if more people vote yes and say yes to that specific motion, then that means that motion must be um, documented in the minutes of 
that meeting, the minutes is kept inside a, 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 a book where everything that happens or most of the things that happen during that meeting must be documented. And the voting on motions is documented in that book. And if a motion go through, being that you want to know when your reps is on vacation, I have to go through the conductor's towers and it also must pass the train operators, both AM and PM. If it passed both meetings, um, including all titles, then that motion must be addressed. If it's a divisional motion, then that motion, the, the reps must respect what the members want and they must follow through with it. If they don't follow through with it, then they must get, they get charges put on them. That's a whole nother type of, um, that's a whole nother Zoom that we'll touch on later. But the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, that's the power of going to your union meeting. You could virtually run a motion for whatever you wanna run a motion on, as long as it affects just your department. Now, if I use that same analogy for electronic voting, electronic voting encompass all departments, all divisions, all titles. So virtually all the titles must vote on that particular motion. And there's a lot of organization and, 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 and mobilization to make something like that happen. But if you want to hold something that's um, specific to your department, you could go there and raise a motion, bring your friends there so they could vote on it, get it passed and then hold the reps accountable from there. That's one of the most important pieces of going to a union meeting besides bringing up issues that you want resolved is raising motions. You could raise a motion for virtually anything in your department, anything that affects the business of your department. I say this time and time and time again, the reps work for the members. The members do not work for the reps. You have reps out there that will be talking to people disrespectfully when they don't even talk to the bosses dis disrespectfully, right? And even we don't really have a boss because not one person in this organization could fire you. They must go through steps in order to fire you. So virtually we, we really don't have a boss, but they don't speak to supervisors like that. And reps should not speak to, reps should not speak to um, members like that. The reps work for the members and whatever the members want, once you run it through that proper channel, they must respect it and they must follow through with it. That's one of the most important pieces of going to a union meeting and knowing what your power is. So the next union meeting, if you guys want to actually go there and, and, and raise a motion for knowing when your reps are on vacation in your particular department, go there. Bring your friends to make sure that they vote yes. Organize train operators and conductors to make sure that it goes through because it don't take a lot for a yes. They're, they're, it takes 10 people to have a meeting and it's for it to be an official meeting. They call it a quorum. You need at least 10 people and those 10 people include the reps that's in the room also. So you just need 10 people um, to raise a motion for an official union meeting. You go there, you bring your friends, you raise the motion. Uh, and you make sure that the reps follow through. That's one important part of going to a union meeting. And anybody have any questions regarding union meetings and, and other questions involving union meetings and how they run, how they function, what else you could do at union meetings? I guess if anybody have any questions, you can put your hand up, but that's basically one of the most powerful parts of going to, of, of going to your union meetings is raising motions. Um, of course, getting your immediate needs addressed regarding safety, um, issues with supervisors and things of that nature. But hold, hold, raising motions is very important, one of the most powerful pieces. If anybody have any questions, you can raise your hand. Um, I guess I could stop sharing the screen. Um, yeah, if anybody have any questions, you can raise your hand and then uh, I will get to your questions. If not, we're going to go to Michael Enriquez. You know, y'all know Michael Enriquez was once the vice, the um, the president of Progressive Action, and he just <laughs> he just jumped ship on me. But it's all good. We 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 back at it. Um, 
bringing this information to members. Go ahead, Mike. Of course, we all got one common enemy. So, you know, we got to unite. Um, so just to touch on two little topics real quick. Um, the first being, um, I don't know if you guys have seen, the union has sent an email out regarding 9-11 um, benefits regarding your pension. Uh, I just wanted to piggyback off of that because there's one, there's a second part to that. And if you do indeed have a qualified medical condition related to 9-11, you need to file that uh, notice of participation. That's a form 622. Uh, I'll include a link to it when uh, we post this up because uh, obviously I guess I can't do it here, right? Jamal? You can if you send it to me. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I'll include a link to that. And uh, basically what that line of duty leave entitles you to, if you do in fact have a medical condition related to 9-11 is that you, will, you can use your sick leave and they won't charge your bank for that particular condition. So in essence, it's like unlimited sick leave. Um, there's a separate form that you need to email along with your sick leave application, which will also include in the links. The second topic is the public service loan forgiveness. And sorry, I'm reading here. You can post it in the chat as well. Okay, so when I finish talking, I'll post those links in the chat. Um, public service loan forgiveness, being that we work for a government agency, we actually are eligible for this. And one of the main criteria is that it's a federal loan, so no private loans, and you must have made at least 120 payments. But if you file the application before October 31st of this year, they will go retroactive to 2007 and count those payments. So you potentially could have your student loan uh, forgiven if you meet the criteria. There's a lot of fine print, so I'm gonna include a, a link to that as well. And I'm, I'm done with my part to you. You done already, my brother? Yeah, short and sweet. It's like my videos. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, so you know, another thing that we are being being faced with, um, as far as with transit workers, is that we have a contract coming up, and um, there seems to not be any organizing or mobilizing regarding that contract. And the MTA, they are ramping up their fight. Hi, you know, how you doing? Hold on, mute. Just like, I gotta mute everybody. Um, they 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 are ramp they are ramping up their fight against the members and the workers and things like that. And, whoa, who's that? Amber cheeks. Let me mute her. Yeah. So um, they ramping up their fight and their um pressure on us and saying that they don't have money and we can't rely on anyone to organize us. We must start organizing us. From today, we we are all grown. We all know the um, the responsibility that we have to our families, and we can't leave that responsibility into other adults' hands, um, even if they are elected. I understand that people feel like you know we elected you. We expect for you to do your job. If you know that people are not doing a job, you're not going to sit there and and allow them to crash your life. And we've been doing that for a long time in this union and that, that must stop. So we have to figure out ways how to organize, how to mobilize each other, how to come together. Um, and, and for simple situations like this, for Zooms, to hear each other out, to hear what, what the issues may be, um, to see how we can work through all of these issues. And it's gonna take each and every one of us. Not one person could do this. Um, there will be no saviors in this. There will, there, there will not be one person who's going to save your life, save your job. You have to be the change that you want to see. It's as simple as that. It takes a village. That saying remains true today. Each of us have a role to play. Even if you do not want to be in the front lines of whatever that role may be, you must stand beside or stand behind the people who is leading that charge. I don't care if it's me. I don't care if it's progressive action. I don't care if it's staying united. What we, what we must stop doing is stop supporting people who is not supporting us. Stop supporting people just because they are your friends. Um, we must 
support people who, who is doing the work, who is seeing results and doing and, and, and actually creating tangible change for us. Not saying that what they're going to do, but we want to see what they have done. And we must support the people who is fighting. Bottom line, the days of supporting our friends got us in this hole that we are in currently right now as transit workers. And the role that I want to play in this, in this fight, I mean, I'm willing to lose my job for this. I don't put myself on the line um, for years regarding issues, even before the issues that, um, started to affect me directly. I was out on the front line fighting. And, you know, I want to continue to provide the information to arm the members. The importance of that is that I know y'all heard this terminology before. No weak, no weak links. You only as strong as is your weakest link. Um, if you have a weak, weak link on a bike, that chain will pop. If that chain pop, then that bike goes nowhere. You're not strong. If you're hiding information from a fellow coworker, you are creating a weak link within that coworker. We don't want any weak links anymore. We want people to be just as strong as, as the next person. Um, and that's what we need to do. We must build that type of um, uh, partnership within our local. Um, we must build each other up. The days of breaking each, other, um, breaking each other down, that must stop. I know a lot of people say, Tramel, you talk about breaking e each other down, but you, on, you go on the internet and you tell people to their face how they is. I'm just, a, I'm a harsh critic. If I don't like something that you're doing, I'm going to hold you accountable whether you're my friend or not. I'm, I, and I, I tell my friends this, I'm loyal to no one. I'm loyal to the cause. I'm not loyal to no individual. I'm loyal to the cause. If Nuke was to mess up today and I speak to her and she is going along to get along with that gang, then I'm going to hold her fully accountable also. I would like that same respect. If you, you guys see me slipping and, and if I ever was to go along to get along, you, could, you have the permission to smack the mess out of me if you ever see me do that. Uh, but I want the same vitriol. If you see me slipping and, and not standing up for the members and not fighting for the members, hold me accountable. But first, remember, you have elected union reps to hold accountable first before you come to me. But I don't mind being held accountable um, for my actions. Mike, you have your, your hand up? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. I mean, this up and coming contract is, I feel like the stakes are high because, you know, everything I would say more or less was like going well, you know, the economy was going well. Um, and one thing that they, this administration loves to boast about whenever they try to sell a contract is that, oh, we got you uh, wage increases that keep up with inflation. Um, but you know, right now we've seen some unprecedented uh, increases in inflation, and you know, when everything's cool, it hides a lot of bad actors. But once something really goes down, that exposes them, leaves them with their pants down. And um, what they say is a uh, crisis reveals character, and you know, we've seen it in um, during the pandemic. We saw who was really about it and who went and hid. And, you know, it's just going to be interesting what happens this contract around, especially uh, with the CPI numbers as high as they are. Yeah, so um, we, we, are, we are ready to open up the floor to answer anyone's questions, comments, or concerns, whether it's um, the topics that we covered, whether it's um, whatever the questions may be, we're, we're trying to answer your questions to the best of our ability. And like I said, um, we are looking to get more people involved uh, from other departments um, to so make sure that we have all departments covered. I want all seven departments covered in these Zoom meetings in the future. Um, so we, we're going to be working on that. And we also want to get more people involved with these Zooms. Our, our goal is to get hundreds. We have an important contract coming up. We're going to be discussing um, particular stuff in these Zooms that I will not probably be discussing on Progressive Action TV, that Mike probably will not be discussing on TA, um, Map Store United. And these Zooms are very important. And it's very important to tell your coworkers to join these Zooms. We're going to be giving out a lot of information in the future um, regarding these Zooms. So if anybody have any questions, you can raise your hand. 
uh, and and uh, I answer your questions. I don't see no raised hands. You know they they you know when you do a good job, you know you never really get no questions after the class. You know. <laughs> Anybody got any questions about the contract, about the state of the union, what's on your mind? This is a safe space. There's no dumb questions. The only dumb question is not answering the question. We are here for you. We are, we are each other um, support system. Check the chat. The chat is dry. People just commenting. They treating this like this is a Facebook, like we just made a post and they just up under it like it's a post. Okay, so as far, well, last time I read the inflation is about 11 point or 10.6 or something like that. What do you think would be a good starting point as far as our raises go? You asking me that or Mike? I'm at open floor. Oh, open floor. Um, I, I personally think that when it comes to inflation and cost of living, even before the pandemic, the union shortchanged us every single time. And they shortchanged us because we didn't do the research and we didn't do the homework. When the, when the, when the, MTA, when the union was saying we got raises above inflation, that's not true. And the inflation, and the inflation rate and percentage of our raise only makes sense if that dollar amount is where it's supposed to be to survive in that actual city, right? So there's different inflation rates for different cities, right? So you were here like McDonald's. McDonald's got a raise, I think of like 15% before the pandemic or something like that. They got a raise above inflation, but it, is it still enough money to, to survive in the city in which they work? No, it's not. So when you look at our sister companies of Long Island Railroad and Metro North, you know, they would, in, in, in New York City Transit, they would say, well, how come we don't make as much money um, with conductors in Metro North and Long Island Railroad? They would use the argument and say, well, you know, they actually collect money. They work, they work through the cars and things like that. So they could argue that. My, my argument would be, don't look at the titles that's high like that. Look at the, the, the other entry level titles, such as cleaners. Why are cleaners getting paid more in Long Island Railroad and Metro North than New York City Transit. What kind of trash are they picking up over there where they deserve more than the cleaners in New York City Transit? See, that's where things become um, clearer for us and we see actually what's actually going on. So to answer your question, what percentage makes sense? Right now, they are saying that um, inflation is at nine point something percent, right? Our entire contractual raise from 2019 to 2023 was like 9%, right? So basically in one year, we lost our entire wage percentage during the during our whole four year contract from, from um, 2019 to 2023. And then they play this other game with us where 12 months, we don't get 12 month contracts no more. They play this game where it's like four, 14 months and then 11 months. Listen, there's 12 months in a year. Where they get 14 months and 13 and 11 months from to determine our wage progression? That is sleight of hand. I call it technology. It's smokescreen and mirrors. Like we have a major issue in our union where the reps, and I'm talking about the executive reps, the top four, the VPs, they play this game to fool the members because they know what type of membership they are dealing with. Let's be honest. They are dealing with a membership who's not going to do the research. They're going to take whatever the reps say word. They're not going to put in the time to even care. And you're not definitely going to put in the time to rally and really fight for what you are owed. They know what they're dealing with. So it's easy for them to get away with this. Members should be upset. Members should be fed up. Members should be ready to go in front of Utano home or Jan Oliba home or your VP's home to 
um, say how you really feel regarding these situations. Because people always say, you know, I'm getting to the bag, I'm getting to the bag. You're not getting to the bag if, the, if, if management and the union is playing with your bag. Yeah, you getting a paycheck but you're not getting as much as sanitation. You're not getting as much as NYPD. You're not getting as much as, um, as, as, as the FDNY. And people would be like, well, those jobs is dangerous. Well, guess what? We had a train operator who died in the fire, right? We, they train us to put out fires in, in subways, right? You have sanitation, you have, um, you have cleaners, you have um, work train, um, garbage trains that do the same job as sanitation. You have, um, you have, they expect us to do police work. Believe it or not, bus operators, they do police work. They want, they want, according to their rules, they want you to say, pay your fare. That's enforcement. That's police work. They want train operators and conductors to go investigate situations on their trains. That is police work. Right. So all those separate agencies, police officers is not doing transit um, workers work. Firefighters is not doing transit workers work. Sanitation workers not doing um, transit workers work. But guess what? Transit workers is, are doing all of their work. And nobody look at it like that. And, and people look at the dangerous, the, um, how dangerous their job is, th their jobs are and not really calculating. Well, transit workers jobs are dangerous also. Right. And we're not being paid accordingly. And then on top of that, once again, we are being tricked by our own union and the MTA because they work together during these things. Believe it or not, they work together. And um, we are left with the short end of the stick, but it's our fault because we are not getting involved. We are not we are not um, making sure that we are holding people accountable. Those times have to change today. That this is one of the reasons why I wanted to start these meetings because we must start having these conversations. In order to create change, you must create awareness first. You must start talking about the things that need to change. Then we strategize on how that change may go. Now we may differ in strategy, but guess what? We are on the same team. If, you, if your strategy differ from mine's, but we both have the same goal, then it's okay for you to do your strategy over there and I do my strategy over here, but we must come together on a common goal and we must recognize who the common enemy is. We are not enemies. I don't see no local 100 rep. Well, maybe a, a few of the reps as my enemy, but as far as the members who have no political ties, if we, diff if we have differences in ideology, I don't hate you. I, don't, I do not not want to work with you. Um, um, I do not want you to join progressive action. No, that means that sometimes you got to show people how your strategy worked better than theirs. But we on the same team and we have the same objective. That's what we have to get clear. But when it comes to inflation, they say the inflation rate is 9%. Then we should be, ideally, we should be getting 18%. We should be getting 18%. They got to back pay us for what they, they sold us down the river on. You know, it, it's, it's um, we, we are in a tight spot as transit workers. I coined this term four years ago, transit refugees. Five years ago, that <laughs> so many transit workers are moving out of New York because they can't afford to take care of their families comfortably in this city anymore. And when you move further away from your job, then guess what? Your quality of life is being affected. You get less sleep. There's more travel time to and from work. Less time spending with family members. You're spending more time with family probably sleeping um, than you are being awake because you're spending most of your awake time around strangers outside of your loved ones, right? And this is all a result of not being able to afford things in New York. Now, granted, you get more for your buck outside of the um, outside of the state more times than not. But trust me, a lot of people that I speak to move outside of the state simply because they cannot raise their family comfortable here anymore. And that is the direct result of poor contracts, poor representation, not knowing how to fight. I virtually 
beat back the union myself with regular strat strategies because they they don't know how to adapt to different strategies. And if they can't adapt to Tremel Thompson, then how can they adapt to um, people with law degrees, um, people who study strategy, people who know how to critically think? How are they going to beat them back if they can't beat me back? <laughs> we, we are in some, some real unprecedented times as transit workers. And my job is to try to get you guys um, prepared for this fight and we must um, get on this together. Uh, okay, so Nuke, I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Your hand is up. I see Lourdes, De La Cruz, your hand up. I see Kemp, I see your hand up. We go just run, run it down the, um, the line. So Nuke, um, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. I don't know if it's so much as a question, but a statement. So I see that a lot of people are forgetting what we went through during the pandemic, the amount of people that we lost, the dangers, dangers that we face. As a matter of fact, the dangers that we face today, um, the subway is, is not safe. People are shooting, stabbing, pushing, punching. But I'm, I'm fearful that this union will not use that to get us a better contract. We are, like you said already, we're so far behind. There is no reason for us to still be in our titles, I'm talking about, train operators, bus operators, conductors, because I can speak about that, that we're still below $40. Like we're right there. There's no reason we should be there at 2022. And if this union doesn't use the fact that we lost so many people, the fact that we kept this city going, the fact that we kept the economy of this city going to get us a better contract, I don't know what's next at that point. So how do we strategize you mentioned a war against the MTA. We have to strategize a war towards keeping this union accountable because I do not trust that they're not going to go and sew this up before. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I, I believe like the last two contracts were done before they were done, if you understand what I mean. So I remember the last one, they presented us with this bogus one just so we could accept the next one. Like the first proposed contract was so bad that the members were like whatever comes next if it's a little bit better we're going to take that that last contract was a contract of committees and promises and talk nothing tangible and we lost so many things so this time around if if the fact that we didn't keep the city running prove our value prove our worth prove that we are more than just essential but necessary what is what is there left to talk about? Well, you finish? Yes. All right. So it, it goes back, and you you raise some valid points. It goes back to members holding people accountable and educating each other and ourselves. You know, one of the issues I noticed with us transit workers is that we don't know our own value. Right, And when you don't know your own value, you allow others to determine your value for you. And the times of us allowing others to determine our value have to stop. Nothing move in this city without us transit workers, right? And our value is critical to the whole entire financial structure of the, the country. Forget about the state, the country. If transit workers go on strike today, the country will be affected. The stock market, the, all the billion dollar businesses that's in our city alone, it will affect the country, right? And we don't understand our power within this whole entire thing. We, we minimize our jobs to just trash, to open and closing doors, to pushing and pulling um, a bus steering wheel. We minimized our own jobs collectively as a unit, as transit workers, as Local 100. We serve one of the most important pieces in this country financially, and we can affect this country financially, but we must stop allowing others to determine our worth. And we must start holding people accountable, ask questions, get involved, 
that's where everything starts. When a, when a child is curious, what's the first thing a child does is ask a thousand questions until they feel that they get the proper answer. We must revert back to our ch our childlike ways. We have child, we, we exhibit all our other childlike ways on this property and gossip and he say, she say, and things of that nature. Let's revert back to the, our childlike ways of being inquisitive of asking questions, of getting involved, and, 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 and just wanting to be a better individual in this union. No weak links. Nuke, I hope I answered your question. All right. So we're going to continue to go down the line. Uh, Lourdes De La Cruz, I'm asking you to unmute, and you start talking. Hello, everyone. Um, what I had to say, it kind of reflects. Could you, could, could you let us know when, whenever you speak, whenever anyone speak, could you let us know what your title is, what department, please? I'm Lord Azella Cruz. I'm a station agent. Um, not so, but and I'm stationed. But um, my comment basically reflects what you were saying about the childlike ways and being inquisitive. There's something that I raised a while back, and it's in reference to my concerns with how they handle these contracts and you know, the unions making decisions that affect the members as a whole. Because my thing is, as you were saying, you know, a lot of people go to these meetings, they feel like a lot of the questions are left unanswered. And it's like, how can you sit at a table, make decisions about our contracts, our salaries, things of that nature, but you don't even know your members. You don't even know our needs, our concerns, what we want, you get what I'm saying? So one of the things that I mentioned before was that I feel like there should be some type of forum whether it's survey, and this is just an example I'm throwing out there, whether it's a survey, it doesn't matter what it is, you know what I mean, where they can actually reach the members do a consensus to see what are our concerns, you know what I mean, and then use that to apply it towards the decisions that they make, you know, when they're at the table and they um, make an adjustment to the contracts or whatever the case might be, because I feel like it's just insane that even when we're having trouble you know what i'm saying that we can't reach the union reps like we don't know these people and some of them in my opinion are not even i feel educated enough to even sit at the table to make the decisions which is crazy to me so i think that's one of the root cause of our problems our voices are not heard in terms of you know what i mean those type of uh, decision making processes and that's the problem that's the major problem all right, so you uh you basically had to make a statement. Uh definitely was appreciated. Um and, and, and you're right. Um and with everything that you said, you know, and that that sent that sentiment is is all throughout the all throughout the property, um, which you said, but we, we gotta find a way to change that. And we're gonna change that through these zooms, um, asking questions and actually getting results. So um I know that you go to board meetings and things like that. So hopefully during these Zooms, you could be representative of the station's department and things of that nature. Uh, are you good? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. That was, I'm just... All right, All right. Yeah. next we got, <laughs> we have um, Kemp, you're next, then um, Daniel, then Frank. What's going on, y'all? Good afternoon. Just uh, there, there was a couple of things that um had transpired today and yesterday. I'm not sure if everybody Hold on, was Kemp, aware. Kemp, Kemp, real quick for the people who don't know, let them know yes, who you are. With with what's your title? If you got any union position, are you on video or no? Uh, no, no, no. My video's off. All right, all right, cool. All right, don't worry. I'm on daddy daycare mode, so, you know, as right. I move through these Brooklyn streets, being, right, cool. uh, you know, daddy daycare. The, um, uh, my name is Alexander Kemp. I am a bus operator uh, at a Jackie Gleason Depot. I'm recording secretary for TA Surface Bus Division. I'm also executive board member um, uh, on TA Surface as well. Uh, today, the MTA, had pretty much fast track um, congestion pricing, and they're pretty much going to expedite the process. They're going to have two hearings within 30 days. They're going to push through some agenda that is going to allow them to collect a ton of money 
from our city, yet and still, they're still crying broke. Um, they're still talking about how ridership is low, but have not found a way to allocate any resources to enforce fares. So if you're saying you're losing money from revenue that you lose from people jumping the turnstile or not paying on the bus, it would be my belief that there should be an interest on how you would collect some of that money. Uh, if you want to argue that you're going to collect more money after getting a $3 billion bailout twice, I think, from the federal government, and Kathy Hogle talking about how this is the first time in pretty much transit history where they weren't going to have to borrow money to cover their budget in the future years, but then all of a sudden, nine months out of a contract, everybody's broke ridership at its lowest, and the uh, and the the future of transit is is more gloomy than it's ever been. Um, when these are the things that that kind of go over the people's heads, where you wonder where the the fury comes from. You you know there was one person at a union meeting, a young lady who said, you know, where where is the anger or the passion? from the people, from the reps, from all the people that, that was represented throughout elections, that the second that elections are over, um, people just close their eyes and go about their business. Um, part, part of being unified is being unified in the things that offend you in the same way that the things are that represent you. Um, one thing I do find about other agencies is that regardless of what they all disagree on, they always agree on what they want. You know, going into this next contract fight, I think it's very important that part of the organizer has to be established about what is it that we truly want? Um, because when, to Lourdes's point, or to Nuke's point, you know, I don't necessarily think that they don't hear us. I just think they ignore us. I think they ignore us because there's a thousand different voices saying they want a thousand different things, right? If, if you're going to say you want more money, well, then at what cost? Because we have to start being more responsible and educated about how the process actually works. Now, part of that falls on the reps to actually bring that information and not to hide it so that they can be a real conversation and not a diluted one, a distorted one. Uh, I... I as I speak to everybody who's a rep, try to go out of my way to make sure that they're not sugarcoating anything to the members. No, no, tell the member that this plan could possibly be better. This, this raise without question should be better, that the rate of inflation probably will never be met. But then how will you achieve that if you have one person, a coworker who says, listen, I don't care about $42. I want an easy pass. And another operator says, I live around the corner from where I work. I don't care about no easy pass. I want $43. Then whose voice gets heard first? See, that's, the, that's why in our agency, they go out of their way to keep us disillusioned. They keep us arguing with each other. And they keep our divisions and departments always at war with each other. We have more titles representing one contract than any other agency in the state of the city. That is a fact. So when you ask a cleaner, what is his needs or her needs? When you ask a bus operator, their needs. When you pander to one group and not the other. Well, is the group that's being pandered to willing to make a concession for the group that's not? Because if you don't address that, you're never going to get parity. You are never going to get parity. Because then they'll just feed departmentals. And then you'll get a standard contract. And there'll be things in the departmentals that allow one department to thrive and everyone else to keep chasing there, there are departments within our, with our local that don't care about money because they are all good. I assure you, there are departments that is chilling. And there are other departments that are like, yo, if, if, if I don't work 12 more hours overtime, I don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage. And, and, and if that becomes our reality, then, then I don't know what. And it wasn't intended to be like, you know, like Debbie Downer, but I mean, sometimes the, the truth always can't be happy, right? No, we're in a bad place. We're not in a good place. We're in a horrible place. Horrible. For the same reasons that Nuke said, that, that you really think that, that the pandemic is not going to be overshadowed? It's already overshadowed. We missed that mark. 
The day we didn't, the day we came to work and didn't get hazard pay, it was a wrap. They knew who you were. They knew what you wasn't going to take, and they knew what they could give you next contract. Facts. They know it. Facts. They know it. They know it. You already been sold down the river. It ain't no. It ain't no what if. <laughs> the what if was what was. <laughs> okay. Right. This ain't. This ain't fair. This ain't what's right and exact. This is. This is smoke and mirrors. Bring your own mirror to the freak show. Okay? What what has to happen now is you have to accept that. You have to accept that you've been played, that you've been sucked, that you've been disrespected and violated. Accept it. Live with it. Internalize it. Let that be your rage to bring you to a union meeter. Let that be your rage to take part in the things that are going to affect the next 10 years. Know that the people who have the power don't truly understand your plight because it's not whether they wake up in the morning thinking about it. It's that it doesn't affect them. It affects you. So the day that they told you to come to work and you did, you showed. It's the same level of reasoning with the people who took the vaccine. They know economically you couldn't have stayed home and not get paid. They know you were scared of getting fired. They know everything. They played their hand and moved this thing down the road and knew exactly what they could give you next contract. I assure you, in their mind, they are not thinking about keeping you up with inflation. I can guarantee you that Governor Hochul is not thinking about keeping you up with inflation. Now, you can demand it, and you can use your collective power to get to where you believe or we believe we should be. But, but we have to define what that looks like. You know, do you think Aetna sucks? Okay, well, what are you going to do about it? You think you should have an easy pass? You think that fair evasion really affects you getting a raise? You think that ridership is low, but they get two, $3 billion um, 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 bailouts from the federal government, and that doesn't trickle down to you? You think you got no hazard pay and, and lost more people than any other agency on the planet? Then, then, then keep thinking, keep believing, keep hoping, keep waking up with your hand out and see who drops a quarter in it and tells you go buy a sandwich. Hopefully you can afford gas while you're on your way to buy a sandwich. But don't, don't let me get long-winded. But uh, yeah. there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do. But um, what I will say is that if anybody needs me to help them do that work, I am available most of the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, j just keep your boots to the ground because when they say it's going to be a fight next contract, let me tell you what that means. If you want to fight, you'll find one. If you don't, they'll pretend it was a real fight and they'll hand you what they feel you deserve. <laughs> okay? Right? right? If you're not going to... Re remember back in the days, if you don't fight for yourself, ain't nobody jumping in for you. They'll let you get stalled out. No, who's fighting for someone who don't fight for themselves? I tend to believe there are reps who are willing to fight for you and with you, but I also feel like if they think that you ain't going to make no noise about it, then they ain't going to make no noise because it ain't going to affect them. Yeah. I, this is what I feel. You want me to be honest? These town halls are about being brutally honest. I still think there are a lot of good reps around. I also think that if you don't make them active, they're more than happy just going about their business and retiring with, with a pension that they've already earned. Their numbers ain't changing. So, so if you ain't going to hold them accountable and just be like, oh, oh I'm mad today, but tomorrow oh, oh, Cancun's going to be great, enjoy your life, but don't worry. Well, bad news is going to meet you home. Uh, I, I'll rap with y'all, man. I hope everybody's good. I hope everybody's well. That was, that was a good word from my brother, Kemp. Next, we have um, Daniel. Danny. Yes, sir. Let me see. You got your um, camera on? Let's see. Let me spotlight yep. you. Yeah, I got it. All right. <laughs> um, well, I got a couple of things, but I'll try to make it sure. You might have to come back to me afterwards. Uh, my name is Daniel Cruz. I'm a bus operator. Uh, been working for six years now. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for holding this meeting and inviting all of us to take part in it. Um, also, the great union breakdown for the meetings. It's something that is not taught to the members when they first start on the job. And when you go to your first union meeting, you feel like you're so lost 
And that's why a lot of members don't even return. They don't know. Hey, nay, motions, you know, they feel like, oh, I don't know this, so I shouldn't even bother coming back. Now, something that is very important is everybody has to remember to sign into your union meetings. Keep a record for yourself of which meetings you attended in case it's ever brought into question. Um, to touch on camp uh, and the toll, somebody asked a question about possibly tolls in the contract negotiation. I've always emphasized that this company has a lot of technology available to them. There should be a way to assign one easy path to a member, uh, a tag, allowing them to use a toll twice a day and be waived the fee for those. If you use it a third time, then you get charged. Now, for the ones that don't need the easy pass, we should try to bring back the spousal pass because I'm working and my wife takes the train every day in the bus. I'm going back out to buy a $130 metric card every month. So I'm giving back the money back to the same company I work for. There should be a perk, a benefit of working for them to be able to choose. I either want two free easy pass per day or my spouse should be allowed to ride the system. Hold, hold, real quick, Danny, just to be clear, he has a point. Long Island Railroad have that same perk. They have a perk for their significant others, not even their wife, their significant others and their children. Um, yeah, so that's just to touch up on Kemp. It should be a choice. I know he mentioned, you know, somebody wanting the $43 or versus the other. It should be kind of now. Bus operators are allowed to choose, or we're all allowed to choose whether we want the exemption for LIRR or Metro North. We can figure something out in contract negotiations for that. Um, in regards to living in the city, we all know we can't afford it. There's no way. I'm a single income. I'm struggle, work. We got to work just to be able to live here. We should get priority in regards to affordable housing. We see it every day. There's brand new buildings going on. And every corner and every borough, they're buying every lot, every storefront to put in affordable housing. Meanwhile, the percentage of that affordable housing is very low compared to what they're actually getting other people to pay for. MTA transit workers should get priority just like any other New York City employees do. Um, now, one that I really wanted to touch up because, you know, I'm part of the TA Mapso United group with Michael and Frank and them, and we try to bring the departments together. One of the things that I've noticed that's kind of really upsetting is in regards to the stations department. During this contract negotiation, there has to be something put into place where if a station agent is not relieved after one or two shifts, they have to go home. I've read of people being forced to stay for doubles, triples, which to me, I don't understand how this administration can allow that. People have kids, people have life that they need to live, people need to rest. And that is mind, blow mind blowing to me how we don't have something in place to protect those station agents. Um, if you want, um, this one I'm gonna pass back either to you or Michael, maybe you guys can touch up on this one. Um, can you guys just touch up on, we've seen a lot of, positions within the union have that have been appoint, appointed members and people put on release versus members that what is the difference of being appointed versus being actually winning your position as an election because we see it nowadays there's a new director of women's health there's somebody working for pay, uh, member services everybody seems to be getting on release so just because a lot of people don't know the difference I don't know if you guys can explain it better. The, you know, what is the difference between appointed, uh, who's allowed to appoint and when they're allowed to versus actually having a position where you have to run and the membership vote for that person to be elected. But for some reason, I think that you know the answer to this, but- um... I mean, I, 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 this, is, this is more for the, I, I, for, the, you know, I, for the rest of the class, let's say it that way. Yeah. So. All right, so you got you got different types of 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 um release, right? You got union release or TA release um when it comes to an officer, and you have you know union release for the people that's like in uh um which what, what department you said? 
uh, um, member services, right? Yeah. So a member, somebody that works in like member services, they could be released by the person who does the releasing, which is normally the president or whoever they designate at any time. Now, when it comes to officers, um, not, not the top 11 officers, which are, um, there are seven vice presidents, and then you have the four top officers, which is president, secretary, treasurer, um, administrative vice president, and um, which one I'm missing? Um, whatever the other one is, right? So there's, there's 11 of those. They could be, if let's say someone retires at any time, they could be appointed by any time and confirmed by the e-board. Um, now, what the officers outside of those 11, if it's within um, 18 months of an election, which means that if it's 18 months or less, they can appoint that person to the position. If it's 18 months of, or more until the next election, an election must be held within 60 days of that vacancy. Um, and that's basically how it goes. Did I answer that good, Danny? Yes, you did. I'm sure a lot of people don't know that, and that's why I handed it to you. All right, cool. All right, so next we, uh, next we have, uh, are you done first? Uh, I got three more. We'll come back to me. Go ahead. Right, go to we, Frank. We, go to everybody else. We come back to you. Next we have um, Frank. I asked you to unmute, and the floor is yours. Hey, yo, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, Danny, Mike, what's going on, guys? Uh, Jamel, I don't get to speak to you much. I got to tell you, thank you for the work you do. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of us that are on this panel go through it to a way lower extent than you do. And you're like, uh, you know, not to get crazy or religious, you're, sac you're, you're crucified, like, you get crucified by many people. And you you carry that that cross, you know what I mean? Like, God bless. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, for real, man. Um, last week you had the attorney um, Romano on. I want to tell people, good dude. You know what I mean? His office, great people. Um, as you guys might know, I go on comp. It happens to me. It's happened to me twice. It's been long ones. And um, it's part of this job, and it's not being fought for how it should be fought for. Now, Frank, it happens before, way too, yeah. Before you continue, are you on comp because a bullet came through your bus? That's right. All right. Just wanted to make <laughs> me, that clear. Me, somebody who's going out here criticizing everybody and fighting and everything, what are the chances that it'll happen to somebody like me? And the chances are that it could happen. It happens so often that the chances are high. And that's something to think about. Um, but Mr. Romano and his office, I, I, um, I give them kudos. They do really good work. They treat me good every time I call them. Um, I called them because I reached out because you had spoken about them way before. Uh, you had put them, you had, at the end of that uh, Zoom, or at that, the end of that Zoom meeting, you um, asked a really good question, and it was, what can the union do to get comp fixed? And his response let me down a bit, but it's understandable. It's how a lot of people think. These are, the, and it's a lot, it's how a lot of people think within our union leadership. Oh, that's out of our hands. I got to worry about this. And they, they have a very small mind when it comes to things like this. And for us to move forward, we got to be more radical. Now, I'm not saying go do crazy stuff in the street, but you got to get out of the box. You know what I mean? Like for simple stuff, like, you know, we have three years between negotiations. We should be working full time at political actions on how to change these things. What do you mean? Um, comp has been around since 1913, and we haven't figured out how to get in contact with the person dealing with our with our case. We can't call. We can't call anybody. You barely ever get a call back. You know, these are things that are mind blowing to me because if you haven't figured out how to get in contact with your, with a caseworker, what are you doing? You know, the, what are you doing out there? 
same thing with things like maternity leave. Two months maternity leave? Are you kidding me? You know, like paid maternity leave? The, uh, while we have options and they aren't being taken care of, t- taken care of. So this is why I respect people who are out there speaking their minds and not shutting up when they're being told to shut up. You know what I mean? The blackballing of people who can be great within this union is ridiculous. You know what I mean? For simple disagreements, you will never get into a union spot. When you know you have the answer, because <laughs> you go and you tell them what the answer is. And no, that, that, you know, if I say that to the president or to the vice president, they might blackball me. So I can't pass that message along. This is the reality going on within our, uh, our, our, our circle, or not our circle, our union, where if these things continue, we'll never get anywhere. You know, we haven't done anything great like get uh, we are paid vacations and and um, weekends off or eight hour days since the 60s. And who was in power then? The radical communist. You know what I mean? Like, I, look, I don't care if you believe in this or that, but they thought big and they settled for a little bit less than what they thought. And that's how we all have to think. Um, you know, Kep said, there's a lot of work to do. This right here is step one. You know what I mean? For for people like Michael and Tramel to get into one place and have this conversation with all of us, it's step one. You know what I mean? And hopefully we can continue these things. It's extremely important to have strategy, to be on the same page, we, and to disagree. To disagree is probably the most important thing because without disagreements, you'll never fight enough to find the truth. You know what I mean? Like, bro, <laughs> ask these two guys, Michael and Danny, how much I fight with them. I, I, I thank them for not ostracizing me, but the, it's the truth. You know what I mean? We, we go through it, and, and then at the end of the day, you settle your differences, and, and that's it. You know what I mean? Um, let me see. I got a couple things here. Um, you guys touched on a lot of these things. The comp reform to me is is huge. Things like maternity leaves are huge. I know these are things that might not be settled in the contract, but they can't be left out of the contract talks. You know what I mean? Because then they'll never get anywhere. Um, appointments that Danny brought up, um, I briefly touched on them. You see people get appointed left and right. I wanted to get in so badly. I never could. Why? Because I just, I couldn't keep my, my, the truth to myself. And all these people that you see getting appointed, that means that they kept the truth to themselves. And the only people that hurts is the members. You know what I mean? Like these people go around bad mouthing everybody. They bad mouth everybody. Oh, Frank, you must be progressive action. I heard it for three years. This is the second <laughs> time I ever speak with Tremel. <laughs> second time. Because I came up to my own conclusions. You know what I mean? Like, and, and they didn't agree with it. I told people to vote against that last contract. Oh, man, you, you, you're with the bad guys. Listen, guys, everybody. And, and, I, and I watched Tremel invite them on. Come talk. Come talk with me. You know what I mean? And, and, and they won't do it because... To expose themselves so much might be, it is a bad strategy for their political goals. So look, man, if you had good political goals and you ain't had, and you were put in the membership first, you go and you speak your truth. If you're wrong, you admit you're wrong, and the members will forgive you. But that's why this is step one and, and the most important step. I want to thank everybody who's come here and has put the time in. To, to, you know, to get to know each other a little bit, see each other's faces. And, um, and thank you. One last thing is how you guys all know, and we've spoken already, that these things are politics beyond transit. We all have to be real with each other and look at what's going on with our cities and say, 
something is not working. We can't live here. We we the we have crime through the roofs, and our freedoms are being oppressed more and more. So at the end of the day, let's have let's do some soul searching. Be real with each other and see what we can truly do. Look at all options to make a better world for ourselves. Thank you guys and thank you for having me. Thanks, thanks for those words, my brother. Those are some um some some good, positive, powerful words. And I, like you said, I, this is our second time ever, and this is this is like not us really talking. We on a Zoom together, but um yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing more of your voice and um and and getting involved with look, they wanna they say you progressive action. We got a spot for, <laughs> over here for you. So you know it is what it is, you know what I mean? We we, yes, we welcome we welcome all the fighters over here with open arms. But thank, thank you. Of course, brother. Nas, brother Nas. The floor is yours, my brother. After that, we got Chris Drummond. Peace, beloved. Thank you, Tremel, for hosting this. Thank you, Michael, for hosting this. I appreciate the work that you do. We all do. Um, anybody that's a fighter definitely can appreciate the work that both of you put in um, nonstop. So I, I just want to salute both of you on that. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to piggyback off of what you said, but Tremel, you took one of my talking points, but great minds think alike. And before I get to that, it was basically know your worth, but I'm going to get to that as, as transit workers, we have to know our worth. But before I get to that point, um, I think the biggest problem that we have overall is the culture and I'm, and I, and I, and I'm used to saying this, the culture of unionism has to change. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop saying that. The culture of TW Local 100, including all of us, our brothers and sisters, the, the, the rank and file membership, not only our union reps that we have to hold accountable, but us, we have to hold ourselves accountable. And I think we don't do a good enough job of keeping our own house in order and do house cleaning amongst our own selves. We have to take our own inventory and take stock of what we're doing in relationship to the job and how we treat our fellow brothers and sisters. Um, that's first and foremost. Um, and I'm gonna start, now I'm gonna come to know your worth. I think a lot of us, we really don't understand the jobs that we have, the responsibilities that we have, the lives that we have in our hands. Daily RTO, you have hundreds of people on your trains. You're in charge of those lives. Your, your, your motor men, your, your conductors, you guys do an unbelievable job day in and day out and it's routine to you it, it's so you've been doing it for so long it's automatic um the bus operators with what they do hundreds of passengers that they have to service daily um other various important parts of transit um that they have to keep the infrastructures and keep the the, the um the powers on and, and you know making sure everything's running smoothly so we don't understand our worth and i think that's the problem. And I think management or the authority takes advantage of us not really knowing our worth. And they said, well, if they don't care, why should we care? And, and, you know, I took a few courses of business when I was in college and the biggest resource, the biggest value of a company is your human labor, your human, your human asset. The worker is the most valuable piece of that organization. But I think the big MBAs from Columbia and Harvard that worked for the MTA, they, they missed out on that, I guess, when they were taking those business courses. You have to invest in your labor, your workforce. And they're so complacent and they're so happy to invest in capital improvement projects throughout the five boroughs. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's, so, it's disgusting to see that, you know. They have proposals, I think they have 22 proposals on deck about various subways, um, the subway lines that they wanna create from the South Bronx into Queens and other you know, tunnels that they have to dig to nowhere. And, and you know, we're getting assaulted. Our brothers and sisters are getting injured. Um, we're going through a lot of pain and suffering. We're going through a lot of mental anguish. A lot of our brothers and sisters have PTSD. They traumatized through this experience. And the MTA just, they're humming along. They're humming along. 
you know, and, and, and to me, to my mind, it's almost like to them, it's like, it's a write-off in the accounting department. It's the cost and do a business. So they'll pay the little IODs, you know, the, the little um, IODs for up to, you know, whatever run pay or whatever your department has established with the authority in terms of compensating injured workers. But th th this is crazy. This has to stop. But how is it going to stop? I think the problem is, is that we have close to 50,000 personnel in the workforce. And within that, you have multiple demographics. You have multiple age groups. You have multiple. The senior man doesn't have the concerns of the junior man or the freshman or the, or the rookie or the pro be operated. So there's too many. There's people have too many different sets of priorities within our group. There's 22 departments within TW Local 100. And like I think Brother Kemp alluded to before that everybody has their own specific needs. Um, and come contract time, I think a lot of it is the disconnect that these multiple demographics, these multiple age groups that we have amongst our workforce, I think a big part of it is, is the, the disconnect generationally. You have 20-somethings, you have 30-somethings, you have 40-somethings, you have 50-somethings. Um, we have senior citizens. So the priorities don't line up. So when it comes to contract time, a brother that might have, say, or sister that might have PIP or papers in pocket as soon to retire, their priorities are not going to be somebody, are not going to be aligned with somebody that has 15, 20 more years to go. The money's been made already for them. The summer home has been bought. The retirement stuff has been established. They're ready to go. Meanwhile, brothers like myself, Tremel, the rest of us, uh, Michael Enriquez, people that, you know, the sophomores, the juniors, the, the freshmen, five, 10, 15 years, we still have a ways to go. So the priorities don't line up. So the sense of urgency might not be on the level that we might have versus somebody that maybe have two or three years left. And this is the problem. I think we have to align ourselves more and the senior man needs to care about what the junior freshman or the, or the younger generation of brothers and sisters coming in the workforce. And we should have just as much care about our senior men and, and brothers and sisters, but there, there's no disconnect. And I think that, I mean, there's no connection. There's a disconnect. And I think that's, that's a big, big problem. Um, there's a lot of apathy and indifference regarding that come contract time amongst our own selves. Like, ah, whatever, we'll just take the, you know, 2%, 1.5%, um, some of us. Some of us just don't care that we have our head in the ground like an ostrich and we, you know, we have blinders on. We don't care about anything except taking home that paycheck. And that's the problem. That's another problem. Um, I understand we have bills to pay, but we don't understand that the fight for now is the fight for the future. The fight that we're doing now, the fight that we're doing through these collective bargaining contracts and, and rallies, and th this is to establish better for ourselves in the future. But some of us can't see past tomorrow. Some of us can't see past today. That's the problem. Um, I think we need to really, really take a look at ourselves financially. We talk about fights, we talk about different things come contract time, but um, I know throughout history, a lot of us, when it comes to that, talking to some of the seniors that's been through certain situations in the past, um, people cave in and people fold. So we talk about the fight, but we as a collective body of brothers and sisters in TW Local 100, we have to be prepared to have that fight we have to be prepared to fight. And a lot of us, I think financially, um, are not ready to do that. We talk the talk, but when it comes to that, um, you hear a lot of, I got bills to pay. I got to pay a mortgage. Um, you know, I got kids in school. So again, you have to give up something to get something. So it's going to be interesting this next contract like a lot of our brothers and sisters alluded to, there's going to be a hell of a fight because 
unfortunately, our union is used to pattern bargaining. And I don't know when and where and exactly what year we started this pattern bargaining, but we are so complacent with ones and twos, and we're so happy to just get crumbs off a master's table. It's disgusting to me. And I'm sure as an e-board member, they're going to come to me. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Brother Nas. I'm your executive board member for TA Surface. I apologize for not. I just, I just jumped right into it. I'm also a shop steward. I'm out of Gleason Depot, and I've been a bus operator for going on 12 years. Um, but getting back to pattern bargaining, as an e-board member, um, the union reps currently, I'm sure they're going to try to come with us, come to us and try to tell us to peddle their contract proposal. Because I've been through this already. I've been through this already. Not as an elected e-board member, but as a, a, a renegade shop steward for many years. And um, it's going to be interesting. I'm, 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 I'm curious to find out what's the numbers that they're going to come up with. Um, inflation is, is real. Um, what we're going through financially is real. The prices at the grocery store is real. The price at the gas pump is killing everybody. So I'm, I'm curious to find out what the union, what the union leadership is going to come to us to the e-board with. I'm, I'm really, really, really curious to find that out. Um, but, you know, we, we got to wait and see and then we can govern ourselves accordingly once we get the information. But brothers and sisters, um, just, just a quick tip, in order to be prepared for the fight, contract fights, um, whatever it is in the future, I'm going to just leave you with a little bit of um, advice. We have to collectively, as a whole, be willing to inoculate ourselves from the disease of conspicuous consumption. I'm going to repeat that. We have to be willing to, ready and willing to inoculate ourselves from the disease that is con conspicuous consumption. If you cannot live off your paycheck and you can only live off your overtime, something you got to check out with yourself. Because like I said, there's 22 departments that we have in TW Local 100. For some departments, they barely get any overtime and they're they getting by. But then you have some departments, a lot of the membership, they can't even, they can't even survive if they don't get a piece. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So, so we, we gotta, we have to figure something out. And like I said to Brother Trimmer earlier, we have to take inventory and we have to do our own house cleaning and take stock of where we are in respect to the world around us, the unionism. CW contracts in order to move forward together and be prosperous and, and, and victorious. Um, and that's that's pretty much it, my brother. That's pretty much it. Thank, thanks, thanks for those words. You, you dropped Appreciate a lot you. of Jews in there, and you know um, we gotta we gotta continue to educate each other because that's what these zooms is for. You know, and like I said, we always don't have to agree. Um, right. You know, but we must recognize what the goal is and, and who the enemy is in this whole entire thing. So, you know, thank, thanks for those words, my brother. All right, so next we have Drummond. What's up, bro? What's going on? Uh, Chris Drummond, I'm conductor. What's up, Mike? Uh, good evening to everybody. Um, I'm gonna take a minute, but let me say this. On June 22nd, Attorney General Tish James had a symposium on New Yorkers and the mental health challenges that they face. And since 2014, one third of the beds for teens and adolescents have been shut down in New York State facilities. In that same period, half of the nonprofits shut down their beds. So where, and now I'm asking something else to that. Ju July 19th, Nathan Rivers, 35 years old, got stabbed in the abdomen by 19-year-old Franklin Mesa, who they said had mental health issues. So there was nowhere for him to go. 
the state to shut down beds. I remember I ain't been here. I've been at transit for a couple calls in six years, right? And when I came, you would see one EDP crazy, two maybe in a day. You see them four, five, six, ten every day. And we got the union and, and this this brother, let me get back to um Nathaniel Rivers who got stabbed in Abner by this um mentally ill youth, 19 years old. That could have been one of us. The contract is the contract. It don't make no difference with the contract. If we did, and I've been saying this for years, before our good brother Goebbels died in that fire, people get shot every day. Members are getting assaulted every day. One of us are going to die. They gonna, one of us, another one of us, we're going to die. That's a fact. The contract, one of us, out of 50,000, especially in the RTO station and buses, one of us might not even make it to the contract. And why was the union? We got Governor Herkel. This woman is shutting down beds. We got <laughs> mentally ill people who should be in facilities. And the union say nothing about that. This is our lives. We're working every day around people who could potentially harm us, maim us, or merge us. And nobody's talking, we endorsing her too? This woman don't give a damn about us. These mentally ill or Roman, they think it's gonna disappear? They spend the billion dollars on communication so passengers can try to call the cops that are not gonna come anyway? This is absurd. We have a very dangerous, matter of fact, they should make a new list. Cause we're an endangered species right now, that's a fact. I'm not even being hyperbolic. People are dying and they're gonna die. Slash, the brother was talking about shooting. That could have been that. I don't know how many inches were. That could have been his, that could have been his life. I'm gonna hear the union talking about nothing about our safety, our lives. And we got the attorney general, Tish James, who I think is a friend, the TWU. Why wasn't somebody there? What, the, what, what has to happen with us for us to march? What, how many things got to happen? I have no confidence. This, this number should make us do nothing. I have no faith. I seen you, not many marches, I seen you playing from out, and everybody's putting the fist. I'm going to be there. Thousands of people. And 50 people show up? Well, I mean, how much fist in your rectum do you need? The problem was just saying we can't afford to live here. And you shouldn't. He's 100% right. You should. You have to work six days a week. There's a problem there. Everybody talk about how much money. This ain't. This is a decent job. This is the hardest $100,000 anywhere in the city. That's why you just had people leave us, leaving transit for sanitation. We're not talking about probation. We're talking about people with some time. I spoke to a lot of them. And they left. And I advised them to leave. Because what we're dealing with right now is how can there's nothing to talk about right now right at the moment if we are unsafe. We got people who come to work with a knot in their stomach. We got a company that got women doing platform doing midnight tours by themselves. Say all over. So what does it take? What does it take? We just, that video a few days ago about that cop with the kid, right? I wasn't concerned about anything other than this. The optics of that is this. And with this, with this, with these politicians who the union, I put a lot, of, I think I pay more into coke than anybody in RTO. I believe that, because I believe in it. But what's the point of paying into that when you're not gonna hit these politicians on bail reform? Now, the thing about this kid is, if that kid got out of jail the next day for fighting a cop, what do we mean to them? That's caused right there. We nothing. You think criminals ain't, people ain't watching that and say they can't put foot in our ass? And the kid, and this was happening every day. And then we get assaulted and we don't get paid. 
this sick, demented company, you had people that had on 70%, they were sick with COVID, now they're on sick control, 30%. What kind of sickness is that? We just got all our sick days, but the more I brought this story, here's this. You, the barbers are talking about the union. Let's be real about this. There's people from progressive change who won and were elected and still on the road. And there's ass kissers who never did nothing, never called me about nothing. And y'all know this too. You don't know half these people. And you got fighters who, and it's different. You have to be, and you got brothers and sisters out there who say, forget it, I don't care. I can work on the road, but it's like being locked up and you get out on bail. You better off being out on bail than being locked up. You got a better chance. And you need to be moving around. It's a whole different mindset when you release concentration and everything because you your job, you can't take a call when you operate your job first. But the union is about this for the brother to answer the question more succinctly. If they don't care, if any member that think the union care about your well-being, you out your mind, look at your reps. Look at your reps. And you got the fighters. Dude, we got men. Now, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. MOW, I ain't gonna lie. They thorough there. Them are men there. They, they are thorough set over MOW. I worked with them for years. I got respect to them dudes. I like how they move. It's the only department I see that moves like that, period. Because they're men. They ain't, can't, they ain't scared of supervision. You got reps out here. If you wasn't making no, listen, another analogy, last one with jail. If you wear jewelry out in the street, you wear jewelry in jail. The way you move out here is the way you move in jail. If you wasn't saying that the supervision when you was released, you ain't saying nothing as a, I mean, at, when you was on the road, you ain't saying nothing as a rep now. These dudes, everybody talk about the target. Or what target? I'm a man. I don't consider that no target. This is nothing. This is toy section of life. This is nothing. And the union is about, look at them. In RTL, look who Eric had released. Look who Canella has released. Why is Lamar Hicks? He's a man. He's a man. He ain't no punk. Why is he on the road? I hear Kemp is on the road. I know somebody, a vice, a vice chair from stations for progressive change, who's on the road. Nah, Kemp, Kemp, okay. release, Kemp release now. Okay, okay, Kemp, good, Kemp. Uh, I stand corrected on that one. A broke clock is right, but anyway, they want people who not loyal you to the membership, that's loyal you to TWU 100. That's how that go. How did Tremel have Eric and Canella? They, they was locked up with everything Tremel said. Everything Tremel said, they was one of them. Now Tremel's a radical? Now Tremel's a troublemaker? Now Tremel is, is, is trying to buck leadership? The new RTO doing the same old things. New RTO. That's a joke. So this union... It's about cronyism, the politics, overwhelmed. Our membership needs to submerge under the politics of the union. They don't care about the best. It's obvious. It's obvious. So our lives in jeopardy, the union needs to step up about these mentally ill folks and lobby for them to open up some facilities to put them in. And the cops. The cops, now, I remember one time we had some type, it was some type of meeting with Lynch. We need to sit down with Lynch and see what's going on with these cops. Cause these cops ain't coming. You can call them, they ain't coming. But part of that, and I ain't, I ain't really know, they got a job to, go, uh, to do and I ain't pro cop by any stretch of imagination. But half of this, when they pick somebody up, they come right back out. And that's a problem we need, like I said, we need to hit them politician who think that this bill reform is the way to go when our lives are at risk. And let me just say this, bro. Bro was talking about these old timers. You old timers. And I saw this during election, which yeah, so you can't go a day without knowing how long somebody been here. You can't go a day to hear that 35 and 30 
and all that could dig it. I respect your time. But what you do, are you a good husband? Are you a good wife? Are you a good father? Are you a good son? Do you help your community? Do you mentor? Oh, you don't mentor. You don't mentor. And if you ain't gonna be involved in the union and you are, step aside. You don't gotta help, but step aside. Stop poisoning these new people coming in. Stop doing that. So you got, so what? You got more stale dust in your lungs. I never been more embarrassed by a bunch of 50 years old, 50 plus in my life. All y'all do is talk and don't do nothing. Y'all wouldn't write a G2 some of y'all if a house fell on y'all. That's a fact. You're chasing money. You're slaves to supervision. And some of y'all cowards. Now let's be, let me be real about this. There's some real dudes here. There's some real dudes here, real men here. And they can hurt something, but they shouldn't have to hurt something. They shouldn't have to. Because that union rep should be there for them. And we all should be there. There's, I made lifelong friends here. But the issue is, what this brother is saying is that what does it take? What does it take? What does it take? Who else has to die? Who else has to be maimed? Who else has to quit their job? Because transit don't want to pay because they got topple, topple tunnel syndrome. Or because they hurt their legs on the yard. And transit, this sick, demented company, is fighting them just to get a procedure. You go, nobody wants to be spit on. Nobody wants to be stabbed. They act like we invite this. And then when the New York State says we are, we are um, entitled to comp, but we got a company that's fighting us tooth and nail. We got a union, God bless you, Melendez, but we got a union that don't know heads or tails about comp. And you're talking about, let's have a, um, what they was have a support group for 12 nine. How about support group for getting our money? How about that? We don't need no card games. We don't need that. We need to come together and fight the management who wants to put cameras on our trains. God forbid that you, you and you guys and women, men and women chase the money. God forbid you take a push and God use the bathroom in your cab. You might as well say, Gee, God forbid, like, like Tremel was saying, right? If they take a they take a video, ain't no way that video is gonna do anything for us. That what that video gonna do is gonna substantiate support lying superintendents and TSSs and some RCIs. What it's gonna do is substantiate because a camera, you could be doing anything in the camera. You could be saying, God bless you and your family. And but if a customer saying you was taught custom out and unprofessional, and then you go to two Broadway and they got them photos, you gonna have a problem. Them, them, the transit does more with those with video and, and, and still photos than the FBI and the CIA. That's a fact. The difference between your life, your career, and you going to, to um, arbitration and get terminated might be predicated on how transit interprets some pictures and tries to uh, um, 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 put their own set lay down their own narrative to the arbitrator. And I don't, it, it looks like even if Eric, Joe Castellis, Canella didn't have anything to do with it. How about, what, what was wrong with telling the membership that this can't happen? We got to do something about this. We got to protest about these cameras. We got to stop this. Or, at, uh, or, or any means necessary. And I think we do have to stop it any means necessary, but it seems to me that we have a leadership, at least an RTO, that doesn't have no resolve. And all of a sudden, they have all that resolve during the campaign, all that resolve pretending that they fight us. Jamel, you need to put out your greatest hits and show everybody who was at all your rallies, for real, bro. But you leverage Tremel Thompson and Progressive Action and then you're turned on, like rats. 
Don't need and that, not even men of conviction. I don't know how a lot of these people sit, look in the mirror. I'm talking about the union. Look in the mirror. And even, I don't know how to do it, but the member, this, I'm going to wrap this up with this. The membership, y'all need to go to the meetings. Y'all need to push, even if everybody, everything was good in the, in, in the union. My thing was with Obama, we didn't push him. You got to push, you got to push politicians and your leadership. They're not going to do right by you by their own accord. They're not going to do it. You got to push them. But the problem is, it's four people to meet in, in RTO. So stop complaining about this. 1,700 out of 7,000 voted. 70% almost didn't vote. And you sitting there talking about, you want Utano out? You want Eric out? You, you, want, you want change? What kind of change have you want? You, you didn't even have to resolve the call for your ballot. What kind of res what kind of resolve? What kind of what kind of resolve do you have that you don't even care about your well being? So I hope I don't bro, I don't have all, all everybody here's a lot of the fighters. This just ain't enough. There ain't enough. But what else has to happen to you for you to use the ABA to book off? to go and march and fight for your well-being. They didn't bring Davies here for nothing. They brought them from Boston to put foot to raise hell. And Lambert, they bring the people back to hurt us. They could have they could have they could have um promoted from within. You go to Boston to get someone? We got pain coming. And that the rate is going right now and we don't come together and hit them streets and do something and raise some type of hell out here. Oh baby, it's over. That's me, that's my spell, bro. Drumming always coming with the heat. Now look, anybody new got something to say? These, um, I see two people got their hand raised that said something already. Want to keep these comments short. So at least three minutes. Cause this is this is going on like two hours. So um Lord S, give us what you got in three minutes or less. I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of doing a lot. I wanted to kind of piggyback off, I think, what Nas said in regards to the older generation. And what I'm saying, I know it's gonna create like a whole combative situation because I got a lot of you know, responses from it when I said it on Facebook. But from a person that has five years, I think what needs to be understood is that you have a lot of people on the job who've been on the job for decades, which is what I like to say, the terminology I like to use. It's been decades, right? You have these new people coming in. They're curious about what's going on with the union, et cetera. And a lot of them raise a lot of concern, right? Such as myself. And it seems like we're being discouraged it seems like, you know, it's a lot of brainwashing that happened. And given the fact that the people that have a lot of seniority and been on the job for a long time have their feet planted and rooted knee deep, you know, with the networks, et cetera, when it comes to the union, when it comes to the administration, they make it difficult for a lot of new people that do have voices, that do want to get involved. And I think that's the issue that needs to be discussed. And I feel like it creates this old school against the new school, right? And even if, and my thing is too, I feel like a lot of the people that are coming into the job, they're treated as if, it's like we treat it as children almost, you know what I'm saying? Because the seniority, you know, so there's such a big difference in the seniority. So at, at the end of the day, they're not acknowledging that we're all adults. You get what I'm saying? We're adults at the end of the day. And rather than embracing the new generation that are inquisitive and have questions and have concerns to educate us, like I said, we're being discouraged. Even the ones that speak out, we're becoming targets. Like with blackball, there's a lot that's happening, you know? And because, you know, they have much more networks than we do, we're overshadowed. You get what I'm saying? And if we're gonna come together as a collective, again, I'm not saying this to create a combative situation, but we have to find an understanding. We have to find a common ground. And if there's gonna be any progress with creating some type of unity, I feel like we have to find a common ground and we have to meet each other halfway. Because just because I may have I'm going on, I have about five years in the job. 
that does not mean that I do not have the same potential that someone that has 30, 35 years on the job that's been involved in, you know, unionism, let's say for 10 to 15. It just means that I may need more guidance because there's certain things that I don't know. This may not have been my field before trans. I may have come from a, a completely different field. That does not mean that I should be disregarded. You know what I'm trying to say? So, I'm, and I'm saying this from speaking to other employees that have the tier six, that have not too much, you know, they don't have too much time on the job and a lot of them feel the same way. The doors are not open for the people that are coming in that want to be involved. And even regards to, like he was saying, you know, there's people that been in the, in the job for decades and they're concerned because their finances are not in order. And a lot of that also, it affects the new generation because come on, decades to get your finances in order for me personally, it's not an excuse. I'm just throwing it out there because it was stated. So there's a lot of things that, you know, we speak amongst each other in regards to our opinions. So that, that I'm sure will come out in other meetings, but I think we need to have a constructive Zoom meeting specifically for that because that's, I feel like is a key root of our problems for why we're not getting anywhere. It's like they're, they're in the way. And I'm not saying it disrespectfully, I'm saying everything, you know, from a respectful context, but they are in the way. And we need fresh ideas in transit. We need to embrace the newcomers. You know what I'm saying? There's so much that could be brought to the table, but it's just, they treat us like, I, like we don't, like our voices don't matter. So I just want to leave that there. There's more I can say on that, but like I said, I don't want it to become a big, huge thing. And we could probably maybe create a zone for that for another time. That's it. Got you, thanks. <clears throat> What, what we call that, um, we call that your induction date is not your birth date. A lot of people think that when you first come to this job in transit, that that's when you started living life. And that's when you started getting experience as if people didn't have real experiences before coming to transit. I experienced that myself when I first got here and they seen my car and they like, how did you get a car like this? Uh, I wasn't born yesterday, you know, my induction date wasn't my birth date. So, you know, that's how that, that's how that went for me. All right, our last speaker, Danny, three minutes, my brother. Yeah, I just set a time, I'll keep it in three. Uh, just to touch up on what Luda said, you know, one of the things is the current administration doesn't like to listen to new ideas, especially from the ones that speak up in regards to speaking up against them or speaking up against things that they are not doing that benefit the membership. That's why they tend to copy a lot of the things that we put out or other members come up with. Um, in regards to COVID, COVID was a perfect time for us to get many incentives, many benefits put forward. In regards to bus operators, we were out there standing in a corner for 30 minutes eating a lunch while COVID was going on, which is unfair. We're not treated. This company does not care about us they that that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand you can go out there work double triple and keep the city moving but the minute you have one incident they are quick to take you out of service and replace you with the next number that's coming after you um we already know tier six we all have to get on the same page things have to change you know especially for us the newcomers so when we retire in the future what that's going to be I think that's something that we all have to continue to do these Zooms and build the strategy and involve all the city agencies that might want to see changes with that. Um, Department of Buses, you already know they keep us very divided. When a new employee comes on the job, they sign up for an exam. It says MTA bus on it. It says Mass Store or New York City Transit. When you're first signing up for that, you do not know the differences between all three of those. So once you start this job and you start driving as a bus operator, you're already limited to where you can work, depending which exam you took. Many guys that start, many members that start with MTA bus and then switch over to TA or Mass Store because they need to work closer to Brooklyn or Staten Island, lose time, lose the seniority. And that's already starting, dividing us. Um, now, the last one is, to me, I always thought this is my first union job, first of all. So I'm still learning, and I've always said that in regards to how union politics work. Um, to me, a union is supposed to protect the membership. By far this week, I've seen the most negligence of mass stores schedules put into place where a four new operators on their first day out 
as bus operators were sent out on a doing a subway shuttle. They go through line training, so they know what to expect when they go out there on their own. So they went out there scared already on the first day, and the current administration just puts them at risk instead of protecting them. So with that, thank you for everything. You know, hopefully we'll do many of these again. He's going to be once a month, bro. You ain't got to worry about that. And then we we would we'd do more than one a month once um if something serious is happening. All right, Carmel. We got a new new person to speak. The floor is yours. Um, so I wanted to say this. I, I kind of wanted to piggyback off of something. I do not remember who said it. I believe it was Nas. Um, I feel like we are all divided. All, all departments are completely and absolutely divided. You'll have the individuals that'll be like, I'm just here for my eight and I'm going to skate. Not realizing, yeah, you're doing your eight and you're skating, but put it to your head. If you don't fight for what you need, if you don't fight for what I need, how the hell are we ever going to get anywhere? Yes, you may have a different financial situation than I do, but let's fight for what each one of us needs so we can all get to where we got to go. Because if we don't fight for something, we're all going to fall for the same BS over and over and over again, and which is what our union is feeding us. The same BS over and over and over again. I believe what the last contract we were supposed to have like 12 committees. I have yet to see one. I have yet to see one committee formed. And even if it was formed, where the hell is it now? Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, Eric said, oh, next contract, we're gonna go for the money. How, where? Inflation is what it is right now. And I don't even think we're gonna get to anything that we need to. You get what I'm saying? Um, sorry, I wrote everything down. I also felt that, I also feel that our worth was decreased during COVID when Cuomo on television said, we as transit workers, we knew what we signed up for when we came to work. From there, and then at the time he said it, we were losing hundreds and hundreds of our coworkers. You go to work one day, the next day the person's dead. In the middle of that, in the middle of a pandemic, you, would, you could say something like that about transit workers, but you're not saying the same thing for police officers, firefighters, and everybody else. And out of all most city jobs, we lost the most. But yet I haven't heard our union say, okay, we're gonna start fighting for hazard pay. Where's that at? Where are we with that? What is, what is honestly, I just wanna know what is on the list right now that we should be you know, gearing up to fight for? because I feel like we're just gonna fall for the same BS. Oh yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna fight for, two, they're giving us 2% across the board, but we're gonna fight for 2.5, we're gonna get 2.7. What the hell is that doing for us? Most of, like you said earlier, most of us don't live, we can't live in New York anymore. I believe the base for an apartment is like $2,000 now. It's only gonna go up. And what, gas is five, $6 in certain places? How are we traveling? Oh, we give you a metric card. Okay, but not everybody lives in New York. So like, I just wanna see something from our union to show us that there is an actual fight. And that's where I'm gonna leave that. that that's, that's, more than, that's more than fair. You know, at, at this point, like, like you said, um, what are we actually fighting for? Um, within these past uh, 10 years since this administration been in, it's not what we fighting for, it's what we fighting to not give up anymore. You know what I'm saying? We running out of stuff to actually give away. And I, I'm afraid, I don't even know what they could give away. I mean, there's things that they can give away, um, but they the MTA been chipping away at things that we fought hard to, to, to obtain in the first place. And this administration has been giving away a lot of things. And one of the most important things Two of the most important things they've been giving away is the uh, the health benefits. Um, Roger Toussaint negotiated that we must maintain the same level of health benefits when he allowed them to take control of the um, of our health benefits trust, and we have not maintained that same level of health benefits. The, the MTA have chipped away every contract and our wages. I mean, as soon as the unions say that our wages is above inflation, we have to automatically think inflation where? North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, 
uh, Toledo, Texas. Definitely not New York City, right? And um, they are a part of our problem, but our main problem is us. We're not involved enough. We're not getting, we're, we're, um, we're letting them do whatever they want to do. We're doing our eight and skate. And for the members who saying, you know, I don't like politics and politics, this politics, that this is a news flash. politics control every part of our job. Our wages is based off of politics. Our work rules is based off of politics. Our health bit, um, our health insurance is based off of politics. So if you don't like politics, then why don't you just go work for free somewhere since you don't like politics? Politics encompass every part of our jobs and we must get familiar with our job politics. You know, it's funny because transit workers know the politics of professional athletes. They know LeBron contract. They know Wesley Russbrook stats and his contract. They, they know Daniel Jones contract, but you ask them about our contract and, and we don't have a clue as to what's going on and their, their contract, they know their contract, but we don't know our contract. So, you know, we must pay, uh, we must change the way that we think. We must change the way that we live. And it sounds like Tupac, we must change the way that we eat too. I just wanted to say that, but um, now we must make a change. And if we don't make that change, trust and believe the people is going to make that change for us. Uh, Michael, before we get out of here, you want to leave the people with something? I'm going to end it after you. I'm going to say something after you. Yeah, um, you know, I stood relatively quiet because, you know, I, I, I'm i somebody that loves to listen and observe to what other people have to say in their point of views. And uh, one thing I can say is that I really love the energy that I see here. People are, they, they're opening their eyes. They're seeing what's going on. And everybody's not as asleep as they try to make us out to be. And, you know, I, I really commend that. And it's awesome that uh, this amount of people even showed up for this very first town hall. It, uh, I'm humbled as I'm sure you are. Mm -hmm. And um, just to piggyback off of what Nas was saying about um, know your worth, uh, it's a very popular topic. And um, they say, if you don't know your history, you are doomed to repeat it. And um, if anybody here hasn't read the book In Transit, I strongly urge that you read that book because you would see that a lot of the things that happened prior to the formation of TWU is happening again now. And part of how this ties back into know, knowing your worth is that this is all by design. The, the Transit Authority has a long history of um, having a large immigrant workforce. And if we look at the, um, yeah, there goes the book. Um, if we look at the, the demographics of what transit is made up of, not much has changed from then until now. And, you know, a lot of people are scared to stand up and the transit authority knows this because we might be the first or second in line in our family to actually like go on the cusp of breaking uh, generational poverty and people don't want to risk that. But people also have to realize that there's a lot more to gain. And it also goes back to what Frank was saying, where none of what we achieve was achieved through these uh, service model uh, union. Uh, it's pretty much like a company union. This everything we have was achieved because radicals took place and they demanded what they wanted. And I would say beginning 2012, we've lost more than what we've gained. That's what you have to say. You, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, you you be, you be ending, you be ending kind of like with a comma. I'm thinking that you're taking a break. You know, what uh, you know what it is? I have you next to me on my screen, so I'm looking over, thinking you can see me. Oh no, I'm I'm, I'm I see you, but I'm listening, or whatever the case is. So. Um, so check this out, y'all. That was our Zoom for today. We're going to try to do this. Well, we, we are going to do this once a month. You agree to that, Mike? Yeah, yeah, I, I can definitely go with that. One, once a month. This definitely went longer than what I expected, but it's good. I want everybody to be heard. Um, Just one thing before we uh, cut off. Sorry, um, 
I see uh, this gentleman, Alex De La Cruz, he's posting a lot in the chat. And with eight months on the job, I don't think you may fully grasp it, um, especially being like your first union job. This is my first union job also, I have 11 years. And um, one thing that I, I didn't appreciate it either when I first started this job is that people literally lost their lives for the stuff that we have right now. And you're not gonna grasp this at eight months. Um, this is something that you develop over time, but as you see that things are traded away and what you get back in return is inequitable, um, that sparks a fire in you. And what is it that we want? It's various things. Um, it's better benefits. It's uh, getting back what we lost. It's, it's a magnitude of things. I can't answer it completely right now. Uh, yeah, Bruce is right. There is no one answer. It's various things. And um, as you go through your tenure on the job, you'll begin to see, but nobody can really tell you what it is. It's something you have to experience. And then we can have circle back and have this conversation again. Sorry, Tramel, go ahead. No, nah, no problem. Um, like I said, thanks um, everyone for coming through. Uh, we're definitely trying to grow this. And then, like I said, like I mentioned in the beginning of this program, um, that we don't need no weak links at all. And if you could bring 10 people, you know, people always say, bring them one other person, try to go for 10 people. I need each person here to bring 10 people next time. You got a month to make it happen. Me and Mike, we will work out the next date um, within probably the next week. And 10 people bring, 10, you know, 10 people come, we talking about 200 people, um, different viewpoints different talking points, educating each other, teaching each other things. And that's very important. Also, um, if you guys would like to support the channel via Cash App, um, Progressive Action TV, you could support it via Cash App, dollar sign, Progressive Action 100. Once again, I would like to thank everyone for coming by. This is definitely um, more people doing what I, what I thought for the first time, and we wasn't pushing it like that. But next time I want everybody to invite 10 people, we're going to take this to a whole nother level. Um, we want to show, we want to show that uh, we're serious and the seriousness is going to start with us. And we have to be the change that we want to see. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Thanks for tuning in.